Okay, hello. It is 11.22 a.m. The day of the Trailblazer Reloaded League starting in, well, 38 minutes. I'm just going to put out my plan on YouTube so that it's here. I'm going to be streaming it. A bunch of us are going to be playing and our aim is to do all three raids or as much group content as possible. So if you want to join in, you can join us there. Uh, I'll open up a channel in my Discord as well. Come by on stream. Also be talk talking just in my friends chat. Uh, I'll put all like the info in the description for this. I'm just going to run through my build and basically what I'm going to be doing for the first few days. Very briefly, very like not in depth because we'll be able to figure all of this shit out on the fly and do some extra research if needed. I'm going to be doing the mage style because um, melee and range look really fun and they have the most options. But I think in raids, you're going to want a couple mages, maybe just one or two mages just to be able to do lots of burst damage and AoE and some stuff takes more damage from magic and there's just a few cute strats you can do so it just sounds fun to me it is the most limited on gear so i'm kind of just skipping over some of it and as you can see on screen i've got my relics that we now have all the info for it's on the wiki so again i'll put links for that and i'll also include the spreadsheet which has like some pretty good navigation i didn't put too much effort into it because a lot of this is subject to change and i will be updating it uh, you can just make a copy of this if you do want to take it, but I will be adding more tabs to it. So, for example, I'll be adding like a Slayer task list of stuff that I'll be bursting. Maybe just a bit more details on specific gear pieces because of my regions that I'm going to pick. So I'm going to quickly go into like the brief progression plan that I have. It's very small, but basically when we start off in the league, we'll have T1. We'll have our T1 relic. And because I don't benefit from the thieving from Trickster as a mage, basically just going Production Prodigy instead. And going to try to accelerate all of those skills once I unlock T3 Relic. But we don't want to skip over that just yet because we want to unlock Kurend as the first region. It just has a bunch of low-level Iron Man skilling methods and it's just, it's just a pretty good way to get a lot of points. It does have some endgame content that we're going to be doing later on, which is going to include doing the Kingdom Divided quest. Grinding for a Dragon Warhammer, killing the Alkal Hydra, <laughs> the Alchemical Hydra. Um, we're going to be doing Chambers of Zeric for all of the uniques. Ideally, I get full Ancestral because I'm a mage. Kodai would be cool, but I don't really care because then I have to go and do Mage Training Arena. <laughs> Ideally, I'm just going to be highlighting a few pieces throughout this spreadsheet for the relics, sorry, for the regions that I'm taking of just ideal things to be doing as we progress. So that's what this whole tab is for in the spreadsheet. When you start off in Mistvalin and Kramja, there's not really much to do. So we're kind of just trying to escape from LA as soon as possible and get to Karend. And then we can start enjoying and having more fun. With our T2 relic, it's going to be Fairy's Flight, which basically lets us teleport to any tool, Leprechaun or Spirit Tree or Fairy Ring. I think this is far too unique to pass up compared to teleport options with Globetrotter. Because we can use teleport spells or teleport jewellery anyway if we just obtain it. It's not going to be too out of reach to obtain some of these teleports or mass produce them. Especially with Production Prodigy. So I think Globetrot is quite weak. Fairy's Flight is going to be very nice for farm runs. And just some different traversal methods. Like if I want to go from Hosidius to the Farming Guild on Kurend. And I don't have a Xerix Talisman or a Skills Necklace or a Farming Cape. That's across the region. That's the northwest of the region and the southeast part of the Karend region in the click of a button. So this is super invaluable early game and it doesn't fall off like Globetrotter does. So T3 for the fire sale relic is where it actually gets pretty interesting. Banker's Note is going to be very good for some people. But fire sale is basically where you're going to buy a bunch of items for free. You're going to get a bunch of bolstered total levels from being able to purchase all of your buyable skills. And as a mage, I'm always going to need runes, even though I'm, you know, I'm saving 90% of my runes with the magic relic. I'm still going to be shitting runes all day because I'm using two tick spells. So I need a lot of runes. We're going to be buying bagged plants and raw food and uncut gems. We're going to be buying some bronze bars and some giant's foundry items from different shops, depending on our smithing level. And that's the majority of production skills banked and processed for the sake of lowering the last recall cooldown, which is based on your total level. I think 1500 total is one minute cooldown and then 1800 is no cooldown. 
So on day one, I'm aiming to go for 1500 or 1800 total just to get this as low as possible because last recall is super nice. Once it's lower cooldown, it's going to feel great. So I'm looking forward to that. After this, maybe day two and day three, there is a little bit of nuance, but basically we're looking to unlock the desert and we're also looking to start slaying. With the Mage Relic and the Desert Region, we get access to Ancient Magics. We are going to need to get 50 attack to be able to wield an Ancient Staff to then be able to auto-cast Ancient Magics. That's just going to be super comfortable. The way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to complete Shadow of the Storm, and that's going to get me my the majority of my attack XP. I haven't actually calced it, but it's going to get us pretty close if we haven't already got it. And then we're just going to grind up until Tier 5, and then we're going to pick Bloodthirsty, which is going to let us pick our Slayer tasks, and we're just going to pick as many burstable tasks as possible, depending on our Slayer level. We gain access to the Catacombs of Corend, which is a multi-combat area, and there's just so much shit that you can burst in there. You can even do Dagonoffs if you don't have a very high Slayer level. It's, it's a little bit awkward, but I did practice it a little bit on my Iron Man yesterday and the day before. It's just going to be very strong to be able to turbo farm Slayer and just shit out uniques, get some points, farm some drops and basically go from there preparing for raid level status. So when it comes to unlocking the third region, for most people picking mage, they're going to pick Kandarin just for the damage boost. Obviously there's the tormented bracelet and there's the occult necklace. You also get access to powered staves that aren't the sanguinesti staff. So that's the trident and the warp scepter, that's the one. But I'm going to skip over that completely and I'm going to go for Mauritania. And this is because I want to do Theater of Blood with my friends. We just want to have a bunch of fun. There are some cool tasks to do in Mauritania. There's also some really boring ones. But there's genu genuinely a lot of good endgame content there. A lot of various high level skilling methods. It has the Hallowed Sepulchre and I just really enjoy that too. So I just think I'm going to see myself doing more things in Mauritania that I enjoy than in Kandarin. And I can sort of give up the damage boost in Kandarin because it doesn't really give me much else. I do have some notes for Herblore. There's just like a little thing here. I made this before they updated the wiki. So you could probably just type in what regions you have on the RS wiki and it will show you all of this stuff. But I do like to be prepared in my own little way because the way my memory works. So I was just really going through like, oh, which herbs do I need? Which secondaries do I need? How annoying are they to get? Being an Iron Man, I know how annoying Herblore can be. Getting towards 81 for Bruise took like an excruciating amount of time and it was just something I was always having to work on. But you know, with uh, increased XP rates, some relics benefit Herblore and farming. Uh, the Production Prodigy boost, the 12 boost to skills. This isn't going to be as tedious, but it's still going to be a bit of a roadblock compared to how fast some other skills are. I did write down a little bit about magic spells, just a few important spells that you'll unlock on each spellbook. We are not going for Fremenic, so no Lunar spells, which I'm not really too sad about because we only get access to Vengeance. You can't pot share other Iron Men, you can't spec transfer other Iron Men, and He Lover, Cure Other doesn't work either, so there's not really much on the Lunar spellbook that uh, I think is worth writing. You do have a few Enchant spells on the normal spellbook. Super Heat and High Alk if you're so inclined. Ancients is going to be a staple for damage. There are some cute uh, Archaea spellbook damage spells, such as Demon Bane and Grasp, but they're not like super, super good. They might be okay with the AoE from the Mage Relic, but again, I have to test and I will add some updates and things like that on YouTube. Thralls would be nice. Reanimation spells, probably not going to be used too much, but Death Charge in combination with a Special Attack Relic. For people that aren't going mage, like range and melee builds, this is going to be quite strong, and I, I think a lot of people are going to be picking this up. So if you're kind of not settled on your build yet, I do have just like a, a really shit set of notes here that I made a few days ago for the range relic. If you just want to make an alt for ruby bolting, this is an alternative. Basically, you just want to get adamant bolts from Soul Wars, get a rune crossbow, and then just click something so that the ruby bolts are proccing. That's something that you can do whilst playing your main account on leagues if you're so inclined. I was going to do this, but honestly, 
I think I just want to swipe one account instead. I think it just sounds way more fun. So that's just, that's the sort of thing that I'll be doing. But yeah, in general, this is kind of like a, a, a scatterbrain rant. I feel like I've been talking for an hour, but I will be updating this spreadsheet. I'm really excited to be playing the leagues. I'm really excited to be doing a lot of content with lots of different people. If you do want to join us, then I'll have links so that you can join all my different groups of friends and we're going to all kind of try and come together, do some of the raids, hop in voice, hop in friends chats and just enjoy the shit together while it lasts and try not to burn out. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys all enjoy your league. I will post some updates based on, you know, strats, damage, relic findings, if I'm so inclined. Thanks for watching this video and yeah, good luck with your league. I'll hopefully see you out there.